IMBI may actually be setting up for a bullish move to the upside soon, but let's go ahead and verify just how soon that is within this video. What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by. Once again, this is Arca coming at you with an IMBI uh, statistical, technicals, and raw price action thread of analysis. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video with a friend so that you and them could consider joining our trading group in Discord called RCAB. With that said, let's go ahead and dive right into the charts. Okay, so we are looking at IMBI in the four hour chart here and we can see a few things of interest. We were in a, we were in a, you know, it's been a few days since I've actually covered IMBI, but we were in a falling wedge right here in which we did break out and I was, you know, the price objective is usually taken from the top of the triangle to here, which, which was this trend line here and it was suggesting a top move of about 7507. We actually ended up getting a top move of 64 cents. Not bad, but still uh, there could be some reasons as to why. So now the, S the SMA 100, which is the 100 day simple moving average within the four hour chart is serving as a form of resistance and a guide to the way down as you can see we found resistance here we actually reject it again here again again and we have this one touching right at the 200 day again and now uh, we actually have this the 10 day simple moving average uh, helping us towards the way down as well there is a for, there is a, a relevant support right over here that has both the uh, the not 618 and the and the 50 day moving average in uh, in confluence with actually the price action from several candles here. So let's go ahead and just make a little box for support that we are likely to use uh, before a continuation onto the upside. So this is. Uh, this is one of the supports that we can actually look at per uh, per the opening of this candle here, the closing of this candle here, uh, opening of this candle here. So uh, the, and also the fact that it's the not 618 uh, inverse golden mean. You can see it right down here at 5041. So that support range, I am thinking that can be between 5041. I'm sorry. What was that right there? It's going to be a little beyond it, actually. All right. So around 5037 to about 5145. Uh, yeah, that 50 cent level, this, this area is, is, uh, is a pretty good area for support. So now let's, let's go ahead and continue to the other chart because there are a few things I would like to touch on here. Now, uh, we actually were able to call a move to the upside in which was a little short from our, uh, from our implied uh, projection or the statistically backed projection. So we ended up giving, getting a move of 24% to the upside based on a uh, back test that actually consists of the volatility, which is represented by this indicator BBWP, and momentum. So we were able to see that we were going to get about a 32.18% move to the upside. We actually covered uh, 24% of that before actually starting to reject. Not bad, not bad at all. But now, the, the reason why I'm mentioning this statistical side is not because of what we did, is because of the fact that we're about to do it again. And now, when you start getting reads of critical volatility down below the below what I consider to be uh, the critical contractive levels of volatility, which is anything beyond this 15 percentile down here, um, when we start getting back-to-back -back reads like this, and you, you can see we're actually well, we're actually right going into it again. That means that a higher, the, the likelihood of a higher move to the upside is, uh, is, I don't know, probably the stake. I mean, it's getting close for an upside move is what I'm trying to say. I'm getting like really jacked up right here. Sorry, you guys. Okay. So, um, if we go, if we meet the criteria and reset the conditions again, meaning going down into in within just within this area we don't actually have to start printing these bars these bars actually represent an eight hour read of critical volatility buildup uh during the time that it's sitting here within the eight hour chart okay so we are leading this is the volatility component it is going right into this area once more with stochastic momentum suggesting a continuation onto the upside volatility is direction neutral only because this is contracting going on the way down doesn't mean that the price action continues on the way down it just so happens that in this iteration the price action you know which is giving us the momentum oscillator which is giving us that bias and direction is it just so happens to be going down alongside the contraction okay but this can very well be uh, to the opposing side while going down as well okay so if we do 
you know, dive right into that critical, uh, critical contractive levels of volatility, we reset our conditions and we can apply this once more. Now we do again, this is actually now one more correct iteration. So it's, it would actually have to be 16 correct out of a total of 30 and 14 incorrect. Okay. So this is the prob the probabilities for the upside accuracy are actually going to be around 52 spot three or something like that. So, but for now we can actually read this upon up, I mean, in that upside move is very much contingent upon us realizing the conditions and the criteria needed or required in order for us to make the upside thrust. So out of 20, out of 30 now, 50, you know, 16 were correct out of the 14, which gives us an average upside of, I, I, I'm thinking, above 52% now. Now, the average upside thrust would obviously be a little higher than now, but we're, we were reading at 32.18% over the span of about just over 11 days. So this could actually be prepping after maybe another day or two before potentially making another move to the upside. Uh, but I do still see some continuation to the downside. Let's see the RSI profile. Okay. So now this, uh, actually, you know what, I'm going to bring this, uh, I'm going to bring the, I'm going to bring the image up for you guys for the, for the divergent, uh, the divergence chart. Sorry. So let's go ahead and just load this here and put it right within our trading view platform right so we'll leave it we'll leave it right here for you guys to be able to see just what i mean okay so um these drives here, there were multiple, multiple drives of uh, bullish divergence, and a lot of them were actually phantom drives of bullish divergence, which is usually when we're making uh, higher lows. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, from the price act, from the price section in the RSI, it has to be the underside of it making a higher uh, low, right? And also uh, price action making lower lows. And when you get that, which is right over here, you see the RSI going up and you see the price action coming down, you get a bullish regular a dr a drive of regular bullish divergence. OK, so in this case, since the price action was going through a lot of, uh, you know, I'm sorry, the divergence drives were going through a lot of price action that meant them that meant that they were phantom drives. OK, so now we actually printed one, two, three drives one two three drives of hidden bearish divergence okay so that happens when we're making higher lows uh, on the price action while making higher highs in the rsi signal so that happened right here and it is now in play excuse me you guys i drank a lot of water before this so um i did mention uh it, it, several days ago when i covered imbi now we had a gap range here to be able to look at. And as we move down the time frames, we can actually see just, uh, I, I think I remember that it was, uh, was it on the four hour? Yeah, so uh, it could have been. It could have been this distance to this distance here, actually, I think it was. And... Uh, and we moved and we moved to the top. And then I mentioned that following day that it's likely that we're going to come back and try to fill this gap here. We failed in doing so. And now we actually did. So we finally did. And so it did take some time for it to uh, for it to realize. But uh, as you can see here, I, I tell people a lot that I leave my gaps, uh, my gap ranges open because they are often to be. They, they often are used as a form of relevant support or resistance. Like, for example, following a few days ahead, this candle here closed right at that support. And you can see here facing resistance and coming back down. You can see right here that this candle came back and tested this support here before continuing up. So there is there is a there is like a psychological component applied within these gaps. OK, so now let's go ahead and uh, get a bias in direction, a bias for direction in the immediate short term time frame to the medium term. Right. So let's go ahead and open up a multi pane of RSI's and uh, take a look here. So, oh, yeah. So now I've made a diagram here for the new listeners and new viewers. So this is uh, this is the one, two, three, four zones that I primarily look at within my RSI. So we have the four zones right over here for you to tag along. OK, so now let's look. Actually, we're going to load the 30 minute here so that we can see an immediate short term. So the 30 minute is suggesting a continuation onto the downside and has reached the very deep areas of the bear weakness percentile, which means that we are likely to be gravitated to bear strength percentile. And uh, that would be right down here. OK, so now this is uh, let's see the 15 minute. It should be around the same. Yeah. So the 15 minute is within uh, the shallow areas. I'm sorry, the deep areas of the bear weakness percentile. This is likely to come in in the immediate 
immediate short term. So now the buy hourly is suggesting a continuation onto the downside, and it now is sitting in a very credible area of the bear weakness percentile, which means that we can actually con- uh, continue uh, path to the way down, which is very much in accordance to we were to what we were talking about within this chart about coming back down to potentially testing these areas of of, uh, of relevant support, uh, the the not six one eight, the fifty day simple moving average, followed by a continuation onto the upside. Okay, so now let's continue to the six hour. The six hour is also suggesting a downside continuation. However, it is in the shallow areas of the bear weakness percentile, so the likelihood of us coming back up here is is high okay so <clears throat> we can't give too much credit when we're sitting in the in the shallow areas of either zones now the uh, the daily since we already saw the 12 hour is suggesting a move to the way up and we are, we are we have been using the moving average represented by this pink line as a form of support and you can see we just bounced off of it like support as well and we are now in a very credible area of the bull weakness percentile which means we are likely to continue up to the bull strength percentile so these downside moves are only telling me that they're corrective and only back my thesis a little more about just coming down into this area here testing it potentially getting our volatility and momentum to critical exp- to critical contraction uh, before continuing on to the upside and potentially a 32 to 33 percent move to the upside okay so uh, yeah things are looking pretty good for IMBI if you have any questions or concerns please don't hesitate to reach out to me on Twitter or discord know that I'm not a financial advisor I can't actually suggest for you to buy or sell any assets so do your own DD and we'll be okay uh, I'll make sure to leave the links in the description below for you to consider joining the discord trading community in uh, it's called RCAB. okay you guys but with that said I wish you well I wish you a good night and I will catch you at the Bell Manana. adios